the globalists have really screwed up. They were so arrogant early on with their corporate media control that they would write books to brag to each other. I mean, some of them bestsellers about, yeah, the public scum. We run the Democrats and Republicans. We're setting up a world government. Yeah, we're poisoning the food and water. <laughs> yeah, we ship the drugs in. Yeah, we destabilize Mexico. Look at them. <laughs> they all come up here poor, begging for stuff. We'll implode the wages here. <laughs> I mean, just the arrogance of them is going to undo them. And it is. People in corporations, people in the Democratic Party, people in the telecoms that are exposing all this. There's so many leaks coming out. That's why Soros and Hillary are all panicking. And their answer is to try to go take a few sad events with police and hype them all up to burn down cities. That backfire, it, it woke the police up. The police kind of went from a globalist halfway mind control position in the last few years are like totally awake. Everything they're doing is blowing up in their face. The bottom of the hour of a very special report. I'm just going to stop there and leave it. I want to go to Wayne Madsen, who's been riding shotgun with us. I wanted to get him on a little early so he could ask a few questions. But I tell you, Wayne, was that not an amazing interview with Benny? I mean, the former head of the NSA coming out and saying it's a global corporate takeover, transferring our sovereignty and our information to a foreign system. It's treason. I mean, wow, that's powerful. Well, absolutely it was. You know, when I was at the NSA, I very rarely uh, had any c contact with people in the higher echelons like Bill Binney. Uh, the only time I'd see them were at, like, defense conferences and trade shows, and uh, that was only uh, idle chit-chat if I ever did get to talk to him. But but he 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 was the real deal. He was in the uh, uh, technical and policy uh, branch of NSA, and he's... He and others from NSA and others from the CIA have come out and, and the Defense and Intelligence Agency, including General Flynn, who you just mentioned, have come out and said what, what an awful situation we see today. And now I would note that John Brennan reportedly, the CIA director, wants to continue in that role under Hillary Clinton uh, if, if she's elected. And here's a guy who just admitted he voted for Communist Party. Uh, candidate Gus Hall in 1976. And by the way, I'm sure that was his cover, but what was, they say he actually became a Wahhabist and joined Islam. And I heard that. It was later partially confirmed. Now he admits he was a communist? I mean, what the hell's going on here? Well, here, I think the fact that he admitted he voted for a, a guy like Gus Hall, and Gus Hall was not a, he wasn't even a committed communist. He was a probably a government agent, like three quarters of the members of the of course. Communist Party USA. But but anyway, for him to admit that, a guy who came up through Catholic schools, who's, who's, who came from an Irish immigrant family, went to Fordham uh, in, in, in New York, uh, for him to say he voted for a communist, and then for him to deny uh, a charges that he embraced Wahhabist Islam when he was a CIA station chief in Riyadh, uh, I think just goes to show that this guy has no moral turpitude. That's it. We know what he is. He's a chameleon. Yes, of course. So he'll he'll change his spots uh, according to what benefits him and and his cabal, whatever that cabal may be. Uh, in 1976, I believe he probably uh, he might have been trying to infiltrate the Communist Party. Like that's what it was. And and now he's uh, now he's a friend of the Wahhabis and. And the jihadis. And uh, what do you make of Obama saying he's going to veto 9/11 uh, families being able to sue the Saudis when his confirmed role in 9/11? Well, at the same time, he's going to uh, uh, veto the the, the JASTA bill. Uh, he's going. He's a, he wants to push through a, over a one billion dollar military aid package for Saudi Arabia. So this guy takes his orders, obviously, from the Saudis and. Uh, Look, I was in the I was in the school in Jakarta where he used to pray to Mecca and recite from the Quran. I I'd, at in 2011, I don't want to believe that he got taken in, but I do believe now that he is a uh, at least uh, a sympathizer, if not a practicing uh, the Sunni uh, Muslim. Another Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, and we know why Lawrence of Arabia made uh, common ground with the Saudis. He, he liked to pedophile. screw little boys. Yeah, he was a pedophile. He saw, oh, the Saudis are too. Uh, if if that hadn't been the case, uh, Arabia would be under the control of the much more moderate Hashemites today instead of the Saudis. 
Why did British intelligence in 1903 choose that particular tribe of uh, Bedouin caravan robbers? I mean, that's who they were to, to form that empire. I mean, why did they choose that group of miscreants? Well, two reasons. One, I already mentioned uh, T.E. Lawrence um, uh, was uh, uh, well disposed towards pedophilia. He saw that the Saudis practiced it as well. And also, they, the British chose the most radical group, the, the, the Saudi Wahhabis, because th these, were, uh, th these were jihadist holy warriors who they knew would bring down the Ottoman Empire, which they helped to do. And uh, that was the beginning of the end for the Middle East. Uh, we saw the rise of, uh, of, of uh, European uh, colonies, uh, which led to nationalism. That's right. So they were the destabilizer who wiped stuff up. Then the colonists would come in as the saviors after it. The Saudis would stand down and give them the area. They've been good little agents, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they have from the very beginning. And, of course, the Saudis were all part of the partitioning of, of the uh, Arab world into various... Uh, what do you make of Flynn? And obviously he represents a larger army movement. I mean, I'll give people, the, obviously the globalists know this, I'm not talking about a secret. The U.S. Army, which 1775 actually predates the country, it's the oldest institution, certainly not perfect. It knows where all the bodies are buried. It is the senior military organization. It sees itself as America. Uh, and uh, it certainly is, let's just not say a, 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 a spring, you know, spring chicken when it comes to things are not perfect. But I'm told, and I've seen the intelligence going on, that the army is just very close to kicking the globalist out, just very close. And then you see the real action uh, with them, you know, exposing Obama, leaking stuff, exposing Hillary, not going along with the takeover of Syria. And it's got other, the Marine Corps halfway involved and some other, you know, groups starting to back it. That's got to really scare the globalist. Yeah, I think especially when you mention the army, I think the opposition to regime change and getting... Uh, involved in these are the are the is the group in the army that has to go bear the brunt of this, and that's U.S. Army Special Forces, Green Beret personnel, and I think that's where most of the opposition, thankfully, is coming from. Because why should they give up their lives? Well, uh, you know, it's beyond that. Happening. They're actually having to train Wahhabists that say, "I'm going to kill you next." I mean, they're, they're giving tow right. missiles to Al Qaeda. They're like, "This is too much. We're not doing this." Right, and, and we just saw special forces get thrown out of one Syrian town by our good allies, the Syrian rebels, the uh, so-called Free Syrian Army. I always said that's a joke. There are no moderate Syrian rebels. There is Colonel the Schaefer did the classified briefings. I can talk about it because it came out later. But he was on the same day he did the classified briefings, and a year later it was came out that he was the one get, leading the briefing, uh, and he was there in Congress, and they said, listen, it's 98% our Wahhabist funded by Saudi Arabia. There are no real rebels. That's why they later came out and said what they, they spent like uh, 50 million and got four non, uh, you know, Al-Qaeda rebels. Right, right. And and not only the Saudis, we know the Turks have been in, involved in that too. And that's, of course, NATO. Turkey's a NATO country. So we've got our fingerprints all over this mess we created. And of course, so how much does that shake Hillary up, though, and the globalists to know that the intelligence agencies, everybody's turning against them. And I'm not, again, I'm not lionizing them, romanticizing them, but the, the intelligence agencies now realize the plan really is to destroy America, and they're having that come to Jesus moment, I think. Yeah, and you know, that, that Obama speech to the U.N. was very interesting because he provided clues as to what the priorities will be for the Obama Center and Presidential Library uh, in Chicago. And that's transfer our power through the TPP. Uh, and, yes, free trade, uh, breaking down borders, mass migration, anti-populism, and he said, oh, it's right wing and far left. He included both in that anti-nationalism. That's any uh, nationalists that don't agree with foreign people ruling you. Uh, absolutely. Good luck winning that fight, jackass. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's going to be the focus. This is going to get tons of money from Soros, this uh, center in South Chicago, in Jackson Park. And, uh, you know, unlike the Carter Center, which has been monitoring elections, and they're, they're fairly uh, benign, uh, benign uh, you've got the uh, Clinton Center, which is basically a, an extortion and kickback scheme. Uh, that's bad enough. But this Obama Center is going to be the most active uh, presidential center and library we've seen in history. Oh, yeah. You think the Clinton's foundation has been a cancer? Get ready. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one will make the Clinton Center look like a, a, day, a, a daycare center. Well, you can tell Obama's excited. He's graduating to the next level of wrecking ball. I mean, you think things are bad now. We'll come back and talk about this because this is it, folks. But listen, 
You've got the UK, you've got the US, you've got all 25 members of the EU now trying to pull out of the EU. You've got the Russians that already pulled out. That's why they're claiming anybody that wants to pull out from this global corporate government's a Russian spy. No, we're just agreeing with the Russians. We're not going to be under your butt anymore. <laughs> they're panicking. I, I don't want to be too optimistic, but this global government looks like it's dead on arrival. I don't see how they can put it back together again. The problem is they may just destroy the planet in the process of trying to stay in power. I'm going to ask Wayne Madsen where he sees all this going straight ahead. But I tell you, it's always darkest before the dawn, folks. We've got a ton of breaking news. It's all coming up in the next segment. This last 30 minutes that I'm hosting, I may have to co-host with Anthony in the fourth hour. It's going to be so jam-packed. Zach Galifianakis, the guy from Hangover, a funny comedian. He has, I guess, a rat leaving the sinking ship. He's really thrown Hillary under the bus, which is a good thing. More and more that's happening. Uh, Democrats prepare for the fall of Hillary. That's coming up in the next segment. I have Hillary the maniac. Drudge is reporting on her having these breakdowns, acting weirder and weirder. Uh, that's coming up in the next segment. We're going to premiere that here. It's going to go up on YouTube as well. Not just her latest freak out, but others composited together. Wayne, you've always got your ear to the ground. A lot of amazing sources when you're up there on Capitol Hill in between, you know, there in Virginia and Florida. You know, the Secret Service, we have real sources just like you do. You're, you work for m Hell, you were there with us in, in, uh, uh, in Cleveland. The Secret Service said, hey, we're going to get you know, info in the next few weeks. Well, it took them a month. And it was like, she's falling down every hour, sometimes more. She's having convulsions. We don't know. Parkinson's, we're not sure. Then the emails came out, Parkinson's and other stuff. Brain tumors, we've got that from medical doctors in, in Virginia and Maryland. I'm just going to stop. Uh, they, but and this is serious business. What is your intel on her and her deterioration and what she's planning to do or where this is going? Other, other key points, Wayne Madsen. Well, I've talked to many medical people. Of course, they, they all preface this by saying we can't really make a diagnosis without, you know, seeing her personally and seeing her records, which we're not going to see. But uh, it's almost uniformly they're saying that she's suffering from some sort of neurological seizure issue. Now, whether that's epilepsy or Parkinson's, they don't know. But they pointed out that the, the pneumonia that she has is probably as a result of that epiglottal uh, flap that keeps fluid that should go to the stomach from going into the lungs. And it was fluid that went into her lower lungs that, that resulted in uh, the pneumonia. Now, and, and she takes uh, medication to try to stem that uh, problem. But I, I think, uh, I, I, I really believe she's going to be pretty well drugged up for the uh, the debate. Well, that's my uh, next on, question. If she can't for a week before show up in person and has to do satellite or Skype appearances to people now how is she going to be 90 minutes toe-to-toe -to -toe live with uh with uh, donald trump I, I don't think she can make it next week well i think she i think she's actually her people are fearing this uh and uh look you know i think the really the democrats sort of think of really you know it, it's cruel what they're doing to her uh pull her off the ticket Get her medical treatment, but I I believe that Bill Clinton wants to be the Edith Galt Wilson of this next administration. Edith Galt Wilson, of course, was Woodrow Wilson's wife, the first lady. After really the ran stroke, it. She ran the country. I think uh, Bill Clinton wants to be that same. And that exactly, because Hillary's so strong-willed, she used to run him. He's kind of glad she's so sick now. This is my chance to finally be president. Right, right. I, I think that's what's going to happen. I also think this is going to be a very close election. And I think we got to look at it's it's so close. I think we have to look at uh, uh, small states could throw this thing. Uh, you know, Maine splits up its its electoral votes by congressional district. Uh, that's w possibly one vote already for Trump. Um, I would also look at uh, these states where they say there's a hidden Trumpocrat uh, uh, electorate, particularly uh, states like Rhode Island. And New Jersey, and especially after the bombings in New Jersey by by the uh, Afghani uh, jihadists, uh, look, the people in Jersey are going to not vote thinking about lane closures on the George Washington Bridge, which the Democrats are hyping right now. Sure. They're going to worry about bombings. Well, I mean, what, what's neighbor. wrong with Hillary saying it isn't a bombing and the same Senate saying it's a bombing uh, and then saying the Russians? Did you hear this? Where they're saying the Russians are bomb behind it? Yeah, well, she's getting this from Huma Abedin. Uh, you know, who, who's her sort of her, her Spengali who tells her, look, at, you know. You her can't Rasputin, her Rasputin, about. winds her up and, you know. Yeah, right. right. Well, I mean, she she has this bizarre worldview that, uh, that, that the people she thinks are the enemies 
uh, of this United States are they're really our friends and people who are uh, supposedly in her view our friends are really our enemies like the Saudis uh, like uh, the Turks and these other countries she's really messed up uh, and uh, look I, I think as I said I think uh, this is going to be a very close election. It's going to boil down to some small states that never really ma made a difference before. It's always been Ohio and Florida. I would look at Rhode Island. I would look at that one district in, in Maine. I would look at Delaware, uh, which is now leaning Democrat from solid Democrat. Uh, look, I, I think. Well, I mean, what does it tell you when she was 20 something points ahead in the Google poll for years? Uh, you know, when she got polled, even before Trump got in, you know, the Democrats were always ahead. Now she's only a few points ahead of Trump about to lose the District of Criminals. I mean, even the District of Columbia, Hillary's about to lose. I mean, what does that tell you? Yeah, if she can't, pick, if she can't account on D.C. or Rhode Island uh, or Delaware, she's in trouble. All right, WayneMadsonReport.com. Thanks for coming in with your great questions for William Benny, former leader, a technical director of the NSA. A big show so far. we got an hour and a half left. WayneMadsonReport.com. Thank you, Trooper. You're doing a great job. You bet. Thanks so good so to much. have folks like that on the team. I'm so proud of that guy. This whole crew is amazing. We'll be back.